Between the two of my parents, I have always been closer with my father. He's warmer, more in tune with his emotions, and has always shared similar interests and beliefs with me. Not to say that I don't appreciate and love my mother for her stoic pride and strength, despite her coldness. Anyway, one day, a few years ago, I was driving with my dad in his truck, swapping stories with him. Since he's my dad, and he was there for most of my stories, it was mainly him telling me about stuff from his younger years. I'm a huge cryptid fan. Bigfoot, Mothman, Chupacabras, you name it. So, naturally, I ask him if he's ever seen anything strange, or had experienced anything paranormal. It started out lighthearted, talking about weird shadows he's seen, and the fact that he believed in ghosts and aliens. My mom doesn't. Once he mentioned aliens, I told him about the two encounters I had had. And after I told him, he seemed off, to say the least. He was quiet for a minute, and then he said, Don't tell your mom I talked to you about this. She thinks I'm lying, and she'll get upset if she knows that I told you. So, of course, I tuned in big time. He told me that he looked dead into the eyes of something that was not from this earth or plane of existence. One night, many years ago, he and his buddies were out driving in his old pickup. We're from the deep south, so he was driving through endless woods and fields near his uncle's house. They were chatting and driving, until they saw it. He said it all happened in a matter of minutes, but felt like it was hours, like time felt drawn out and non-existent. He slammed on the brakes. A giant, saucer-like machine was silently hovering just above them and directly in front of them on the road. Entirely still and motionless. He said that that was one of the scariest parts. That a machine that huge and that intricate, it was covered in impossibly bright and vibrant lights, made of a material nearly incomprehensible in texture and shape, could make no noise at all. Around the entire craft, in a band-like shape, he could tell was some kind of one-way mirror or window. He couldn't see into it, but he could feel in his bones and in his core that something was staring him right in his eyes. He was paralyzed from it. He felt entirely known. He didn't know how, but he knew in his gut that whatever was looking at him knew his entire past and everything about him. It knew his name, and it had known him for a long time. He said that it felt like he was in an unwanted staring contest with God for what felt like hours, and then it flashed away over the tree line in a blink of an eye, impossibly fast. He checked the clock, and only a couple of minutes had went by. He and his friends were horrified, obviously. They collected themselves and drove full speed to his uncle's house to ask his aunt and uncle if they saw it. They did, and they were pale in the face and acting very off. Moments later, it appeared in the tree line by their house. It sat there still for a couple of minutes, daunting and threatening, like a warning to mind their own business and that they were being watched. And then it was gone never seen again, and he and his friends and family agreed to not speak of it again to each other, to make sure that they could get some sleep. However, the worst was yet to come for them. In a separate story that had nothing to do with the UFO, he told me this one afterwards. He stopped himself, and I had to coax him into telling me. I promised that I wouldn't call him crazy. He had never even told my mother this story. This second story chills me to the bone and makes me afraid that my family is being followed by something that we don't understand. I know that it's true, too, because my dad is extremely jovial and lighthearted, and when he told me this story, he looked like a scared little boy. 
he teared up and looked visibly shaken. Mind you, I've never seen my dad scared or ever even cry before. But my dad made me promise that I wouldn't tell anyone this second story. I have to keep it until my grave. He's afraid that, if I speak of it, it will make things start happening around him and I again. I'm sorry for being such a tease with it, but I can't speak of it. I haven't even told my boyfriend of two years. Not a soul until I die. I only mention it so you know what my dad told me was true about what he saw out in the field by his uncle's house. I can't help but wonder if my family is specifically being followed or watched by someone or something. It would make my personal experiences with the paranormal and unexplained make more sense. But I will never know for sure. And this is something I've been needing to get off my chest for a while, and I'm not sure where else to tell it. A few years back, after my junior year of high school, I was working a summer job, making enough money where I could support myself for a few days if needed. At the time, my parents decided they wanted to take a trip to the beach for their anniversary, leaving me home by myself for a week, which was fine by me. The time came and they left, leaving me and my dog to fend for ourselves. I should add, it wasn't uncommon to hear footsteps or things moving on their own, as I've lived next to a graveyard all my life, and I just took it as that's how things were. About three days had passed since they had left, and I had just gotten off of work, and the sun was starting to set by the time I got home and it was pretty much dark outside. The first thing I noticed when I pulled into the driveway was that I could see light through the window of my living room, which I thought was odd. But when I walked into my home, I realized every single light in my house had been turned on. I didn't think much of it. I looked through the house and turned them all off, leaving only my living room and kitchen light on. And that was when I noticed that my dog wasn't laying in his bed as he usually was. Instead, I found him underneath the cabinet in my bathroom, shaking to the point that I thought he was sick. But he calmed down and came out when he saw me. And like I said, a little activity in the house was not uncommon. So, I just thought it was a strange occurrence and shrugged it off. At this point, it's really dark out, and it started pouring down rain. I had to go pick up dinner from somewhere, so I went and got Sonic, and when I headed back, I had nearly forgot about what had happened earlier. But sure enough, when I pulled back into the driveway, all the lights were on again. But this time, when I stepped foot into the house, I was hit by this overwhelming stench. A smell so foul and pungent, it made my eyes water immediately. And that should have been my telltale sign to get out of there as soon as I could. But I didn't. I sat my food on the counter by the door and went to find my dog, who was lying in the corner of the room, seemingly stressed to the point that he had threw up on the floor. I quickly got him on his chain and out of the house and got to cleaning up the mess. At this point, the smell had only gotten worse, and I had this terrible feeling of fear that I can't describe. I finished cleaning the mess up and realized that I should probably turn the lights off. So I started in the bathroom, into my father's room, and then my room. Nothing eventful had happened, but when I got to my mom's room, I had this feeling like something was staring at me. I looked around and looked out of the windows, but there was nothing there. So, I turned around to leave the room, and that's when I saw it. This awful, decayed, or burnt looking thing was standing right where I'd come from, in the middle of the hallway outside my mom's room. I froze in fear 
and just stared directly back at him. Its eyes were almost human, but way too sunken back, and I could see what looked like dark, charred skin hanging from its face. I have no idea how long we stared at each other, but suddenly, I turned around and tried to run, but there was nowhere to go. But when I turned back, the thing was gone, and the lights in the living room had turned back on. I remember just sitting in the floor in tears, just staring at the spot where the thing had stood. I must have sat there for about 10 minutes, and before sprinting out of the house, grabbing my dog and staying in my truck the entire night. By the time we went back in, the sun had come back up and things seemed like normal. I never mentioned this to anyone, and probably wouldn't have, but I saw it again yesterday. From everything I've researched, this sounds demonic, and the activity in the house has increasingly picked up since that first sighting. If you're reading this and have some sort of knowledge about the paranormal or demonic, please let me know what this sounds like to you. This happened many years ago. My friends, family, and I gathered together to go and enjoy a Saturday outing to the park. This park was your typical open field site, and the field was as large as four football stadiums. It had no playgrounds and not that many trees, so it was ideal to play catch or football. I was an active and sporty adolescent at this point, and so I decided to play a game of catch football with my friends. My friend and I decided to toss the ball around for a bit until the game began, as the rest of the gang were still settling in. Perhaps 10 minutes into the practice, my friend tossed the ball directly to me with pretty good precision, so that I only had to move about a foot to my right. But as the ball was coming up toward me, I looked up, and right above me, I saw what I can only describe to you as a black saucer. I'm trying to remember as it was many years ago. Mind you, I only saw the bottom of the object I was looking at, but oddly, the object remained steady. It didn't move or make any noise. At this age, I knew all about UFOs, but I wanted to make certain that I wasn't hallucinating it. I looked back down at my friend, and I told him to look up. That's when I noticed that he hadn't moved. Him and everyone else were fucking frozen. I yelled to grab the attention of family members, but got no answer. The whole field that had dozens of families enjoying their day, well, were all frozen in time. No one moved, birds remained still in the sky, the air seemed dusty and had no scent. Now, I hadn't left my spot for the fact I was in shock, but I was surprised that I was able to move as normal. Here's the kicker. As I looked up to the sky once again, the object that was there had now disappeared. No noise, a beautiful clear blue sky, and no object. I looked back down at my friend and remained confused. And that's when I heard him say, Hey, throw the ball. Everything had went back to normal. This all happened in a matter of seconds. I quickly asked my friend if he had seen the same object as I did, stupidly expecting him to say yes. He was confused, but knew how serious I was in the moment. He saw it in my face. He said no. I never spoke about what happened to me until years later, when I mentioned it to my spouse. I'm not sure what happened, but I do know. I would not like to encounter it ever again.